Good morning, friends. Myself, Sudhansu. Welcome to Conceptual Classes. In this new video, we will discuss about main topics of the UPSC main syllabus agriculture. Paper 1. There are so many questions related to cropping system, cropping pattern, crop production technologies, impact of hiding, variety, soil duration, crop, and various cropping system and farming system. Each and every year, these questions are, uh, are asked in the UPSC men's examination. So, we will discuss one by one uh, these topics in details and uh, keeping in view the boundary of the syllabus as well as the course last year's questions. These are something about me. I have done my BSA from Ari Pusa and currently working in Bank of India. I also prepared for UPSC. So, <clears throat> in this video, we will discuss cropping patterns in different in different agroclimatic zones of India. Generally, we are not getting these topics in a single book. So I have collected uh, the material from different sources, keeping in view the questions, last year questions, as well as the boundary of the syllabus as given in the UPSC official website. So in this video, we'll discuss introductions. What are the prevalent cropping system in, in India, different agroclimatic zones? Issue related to irrigation ecosystem, cropping system, oriented production technology, and related issues. UPSC generally not ask any questions a particular like rice wheat cropping system. They are asked some issues, uh, issues involved in the rice wheat, uh, rice wheat cropping system, rice rice cropping system. So we we'll discuss one by one different issues involving rice wheat cropping system, rice rice cropping system, rice uh, mustard cropping system, rice kernel cropping system, rice um, uh, rice permanent uh, cropping system, permanent wheat cropping system, permanent maize cropping system, maize wheat cropping system, sugar cane wheat cropping system, sorghum wheat cropping system, cotton wheat cropping system, soybean wheat uh, cropping system, and legume based cropping system, as well as horticultural crops. So, let us start. Objective of the course it is very clear that concept related to cropping system, cropping patterns within the boundary of UPSC men's official syllabus and maximize your score in various exams without attending coachings or tuition in minimum time and efficient utilization of time as per your convenience because in uh, coaching you have to devote the time as per the schedule of the classes but here you can uh, watch the video whenever you find the suitable time for, time for you target audience very clear you it may be UPSC, state UPSC, IFS and state college service examination including BSC agriculture students also can watch this syllabus Disclaimer very clear. Please don't confuse that. Only watching video will be sufficient to score maximum in the exam. It will help only you to clear the concept and systematic and selective understanding and easy recall. Please share, like, comment, subscribe for the latest uh, getting notification of this video. And if it really helping you, dislike or dislike the com with comments so that I can improve the same in the next video. If you have any doubt or confusion you, or you want any new video on a specific topic, Please write in the comment box given below. It is my personal guarantee that video will be uploaded within 24 hours. For more video, you can search on my concept uh, YouTube on the name Conceptual Classes. So first, before starting, just I want to discuss what are the syllabus given on the uh, UPC official websites. They are the second paragraph of the syllabus, like cropping patterns in different agroclimatic zones of the country, impact of yielding variety and short duration of variety on shifting the cropping pattern, concept of multiple cropping, multi-storied uh, multi cropping, relay cropping, intercropping and their importance in food production. If you see the previous year questions, there are so many questions. If you start from last uh, three or four years question, in 2012, they ask uh, intercropping their advantage and disadvantage, integrated farming system, minimum tillage and zero tillage, their differences. In 2011, they asked uh, crop diversification, impact of climate change or environment change on cropping pattern, relay cropping, diversification and intensification of the agriculture. In uh, 2016, they asked how agroclimatic zones are determined and what are the basis of crop planning are made in the rainfall area. In 2016 itself, they asked for multi, -pro multi story cropping, relay cropping, crop diversification and factors affecting it. In 2015, they asked the rice wheat cropping system and intercropping. So each and every year, they asked at least one or two questions from this uh, chapter, uh, syllabus or from these parts. So it is very, very important chapters. So let us start. So first, uh, I want to clear what are the different terms that are used in the cropping system. First, what is cropping system? 
It is a set of interrelated interacting components used for efficient utilization of the limited resources like land, water, nutrients, etc. and work on the three pillars like genotype, hunting geometry and management practices. So cropping system is nothing, it is the interrelated and interacting component. There are so many components of the agriculture like land, water, labor, nutrients, sunlight and so on. So how these different uh, enterprises or different uh, components are used so that their efficiency can be maximized. So it works only on three pillars. Genotype, genotype means the what are the genetic makeup of the plants or what are the genetic makeup of the seeds which you are used in the planting. Then planting geometry. Planting geometry involves their arrangement in the time as well as space. Which crops plant you are planted in which time? Summer, summer, Rabi, Kharif. And what are the row to row distance? What are the plant to plant distance? What are the design of the planting to maximize the input <coughs> use efficiency like uh, water use efficiency, uh, light use efficiency and so on. Management practices involves irrigation, fertilizer use and so on. So basically cropping system, it involves cropping pattern plus management. So cropping pattern differ according to the location, according to the climatic and soil type, climate and soil type. So all cropping system are location specific. Now we we'll discuss cropping pattern. What are cropping pattern? Cropping rotation, uh, cropping pattern can be defined, uh, defined as crop rotation practiced by majority of the farmers in a specific local, uh, locality which involves type of crops, their arrangement in time and space and yearly sequence and proportional area. Means which crops we are growing. What are their arrangement in, in time? Arrangement in time means uh, what are their sequence of the crops? What are their arrangement in space? Arrangement in space means what are their row to row distance and what are the plant to plant distance? Their sequence and proportional area, how, which crops we are following in how much area. Farming system, what it is the appropriate combination of various farm enterprises. Cropping system only involves the crops, but farming system involves various farm enterprises like cropping system, livestock, poultry, fisheries, forestry, and all enterprises of the agriculture with an objective of higher profitability. Please note that mixed farming is also a similar definition, but objective will be only a difference. In farming system, the main objective is the higher profitability, but in mixed farming, the objective is the only subsistence. Means we, the way we are doing agriculture or system only for the subsistence, only for the livelihood of the rural peoples. So these are the difference between farming system and mixed farming they are the similar definition we can write only objective we can change the cropping scheme what is the cropping scheme this is the plan according to which crops are raised on the individual plot with an objective to get maximum return on sustainable basis without impairing the soil fertility and suppose this is the plot on this plot how we are selecting the crops with an objective to maximum return so that uh, soil fertility could not be impaired so soil fertility could not affect it Cropping intensity, you all know them better. Number of crops grown in a year into 100. In India, it is 136%. Multiple cropping, it is the cultivation of two or more crops on same plot in a year without deteriorating soil fertility. It may be intercropping, mixed cropping, sequential cropping, and relay cropping. In multiple cropping, we will discuss intercropping. There are four or five types of intercropping, mixed cropping, sequential cropping, and relay cropping. We will discuss these topics in the next video uh, in detail. Now let us start agroclimatic zones. Since the topic is agroclimatic uh, zones and their cropping system, so you know better that all agroclimatic zones are uh, divided on the basis of climate and soil type of crops uh, which are grown in the particular area. So, particularly if, uh, taking the consideration the climate, soil type, and uh, irrigation and uh, rainfall soil pH and different characteristics of soil and climate, we are classifying our country into total 15 agroclimatic zones, which are the starting from first. First is your Western Himalaya, which, convert, which covers Jammu Kashmir, some parts of Punjab and Himachal Pradesh, some parts of Uttarakhand. Second is your Eastern Himalaya, which involves the entire part of the Northeast India. Third is your medical Ganget, sorry, lower Gangetic plant, which involves part of the West Bengal and some parts of Odisha. Fourth is 
मिडिल मिडिलिक प्लेंट विच इन्वॉल्व बिहार एंड ईस्टर्न यूपी एंड झारखंड फिफ्थ अपर गैंगेटिक प्लेंट विच इन्वॉल्व वेस्टर्न यूपी सब पार्ट ऑफ दिल्ली एंड सब पार्ट ऑफ राजस्थान सिक्स इन्वॉल्व ट्रांस गैंगेटिक प्लेंट विच इन्वॉल्व पंजाब हरियाणा एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ राजस्थान सेवन इन्वॉल्व ईस्टर्न प्लेटो एंड हिल्स विच इज उड़ीसा सम पार्ट ऑफ आंध्रा एंड एम पी एट सेंट्रल प्लेटो एंड हिल्स इन्वॉल्व एंटायर एम पी सम पार्ट ऑफ यूपी एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ राजस्थान नाइन इज योर वेस्टर्न प्लेटो एंड हिल्स विच इन्वॉल्व एम पी सम पार्ट ऑफ गुजरात सम पार्ट ऑफ एम पी एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ आंध्रा और तेलंगाना टेन साउथर्न प्लेटो एंड हिल्स विच इन्वॉल्व एंटायर तमिलनाडु सम पार्ट ऑफ आंध्रा एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ केरला Eleven is your east coast and plain and hills, which involve entire coastal area in uh, of West Bengal, Odisha, Andhra, Tamil Nadu, and some parts of Kerala. Twelve is western uh, west coast plain and hills, which involves entire coastal area of the Kerala, Karnataka, Maharashtra, and some parts of Goa. Then thirteen is your Gujarat plain and hills, which involves entire plain area of the Gujarat and uh, hilly area of the Gujarat. Forty-eighth is Western Dry Regions, which involves uh, which is very low rainfall, or part of the Rajasthan. Fifteenth is your Iceland, which involves Andaman and Nicobar. So these are the fifteen agro-climatic zones of India, which are divided on the basis of climate, rainfall, soil temperature, and various crops that are uh, grown in these particular areas. So total fifteen agro-climatic zones. Which involves total our geographical area is 329 million hectare. Now I want to discuss in some basic what is the agroclimatic zones. It is an land unit in terms of major climates suitable for a certain range of crops and cultivars. Cultivars means variety. The, the planning aims at scientific management of regional resource to meet the food, fiber, food, food, uh, food, and fuel wood. Without adversely affecting the status of the natural resource and the environment. So basic. in agro climatic classification is that keeping in view the available limited natural resources we have to distribute all the food fiber for fuel or three we are um, uh, telling three f in the rural area without affecting the natural resource or sustainable use cropping system of region are decided by a large number of soils what are the factors or what are the parameters on which cropping system are decided they are the Number of uh, soil and climatic parameters, which determines overall agroecological setting for the nourishment and appropriateness of the crop for the crops cultivation. It involves infrastructure facilities, socio-economic factors, and technological factors, which we will discuss in the next slide. So, first, what are the major factors in cropping patterns? First, we want to discuss what are the irrigated area and what is the rain-fed area. Rain-fed agriculture still accounts for about 98, 92.8 million hectare, or 65 percent of the crop area. Whatever crop area in our country, out of which 92.8 million means about 93 million hectares, or 65 percent of the crops cropping area are only rain-fed, which are totally dependent on the rainfall and no any irrigation facilities. Due to prevailing socio-economic situations such as dependency of the large population on agriculture. small land holding there is high population pressure on land resources these are the problems <clears throat> to constitute uh, 56.15 million marginal farmers means whatever mar uh, farmers they are classified into marginal small medium and large so total the farmers which have less than one acre area one hectare area are known as Marginal farmers. So total 56.15 million hectares of the farmers are marginal in our country. The farmers which have one to two hectare of the land are classified as small farmers, and it contributes total 17.92 means approximately 18 million hectares of the farmers are 18 million farmers are uh, a small category. And semi-medium we can we can call two to four hectare of the land. Or the farm or farm farm holding of two to four hectares are known as semi-medium farmers, which contributes 13.25 millions of the, our uh, farmers, making to the 90 percent or 97.15 of the uh, operational holding. So we can imagine total 97.15 of the million hectare million farmers are only 
small, medium, or marginal. So now we some discuss some difference between irrigated and rain-fed area. What are the irrigated area covers only Indo-Gangetic plain and coastal area of Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. Indo-Gangetic plain include Punjab, Haryana, UP, Bihar, and Jammu and Kashmir. This major agriculture in this area are only irrigated. Rainfed area involves Rajasthan, MP, Northeast, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, Gujarat. This area are only rain dependent and uh, no any proper irrigation facility are available and like these two areas. So irrigated area covers total 51 million hectares which is 35% of the net crop area and it contributes 56% of the total food grain production. So whatever food gets, uh, food, gets uh, food grains we are producing in a year, 56% of the food came from irrigated area which cover only 35% of the area and 51 million hectare. However, rent area contributes 92.8 million hectare of the total land which contributes 65% of the net crop area and contributes only 44% of the total food grain, uh, food grain production. So it is very clear that rent area contributes uh, covers more, more uh, acres as compared to irrigated area which is only 35% so However, a rent fed covers 65%, but it contributes only 44% of the total food grade uh, production. So, a lot of potential is available in the rent fed area to exploit. Principal crops in irrigated area, highest irrigated area crops covered sugarcane, which is around 88%, wheat 84.3%, barley 60.8%, rapture and mustard 57.5%, rice, tobacco, these are less than 50%. So, most uh, irrigated area covers sugarcane, wheat, and barley. So we will discuss what are the main issues uh, involved in the irrigated cropping system because in this chapter or in this topic first of the questions ask only what are the issues, what are the problems and how that problem can be managed. So first uh, we discuss what, uh, what are the issues involved in the irrigated cropping system. So what are the main problems? First issue is resource characterization, how we can define lack of adequate planning in land climate related resources is whatever resources we have which are limited limited resources means land uh, land labor capitals sun uh, nutrients these all the resources are limited but we have not adequate or proper plan how to use that resources to maximize the, their efficiency secondly we have farmers participation what is farmer participation means most of the agriculture scientists or after independence if we analyze the development in agriculture generally we have followed only top down approach top down approach means the scientist or planning commission or ministry member of parliament they are sitting in the center delhi and they are planning for entire northeast and coastal and uh, uh, hilly areas without cons uh, considering what are the actual situation of the farmer what are the actual available resources so this top down approach is the big problem for the Indian agriculture due to which it is despite millions of the uh, millions of the expenses we have not achieved the uh, desired or uh, targeted level of production or productivities and still for Indian farmers are in uh, <coughs> difficult situation third is your low water uh, efficiency what is low water efficiency it means we are applying the water we have adequate resource of water but due to inadequate or excess use like improper leveling most of the fire fields are not properly leveled like hilly areas in the mp gujarat they are improper leveled but we are using inadequate irrigation method like flooding we are simply irrigating the field as uh, in, in spite of crops means we are simply flooding and uh, wasting the, uh, the waters Quality policy measures like subsidized electricity to farmers leads to over irrigation. Government is formulating for policy with the target to form their vote bank that farmers will not get any bill or any they no need to bill, pay any bill for the electricity used in the agriculture. So due to which they are using or wasting the water in the field. Non-adoption of suitable cropping system like paddy cultivation and sand soil of Punjab. Cropping pattern or cropping system should be the according to their climate or according to their soil if soil suit for particular crop then we have to follow particular uh, cropping system so in punjab you say they are sand, uh, in punjab sandy soil but still 
they are doing uh, paddy cultivation. This is the wastage of water as well as in a uh, uh, low water use efficiency. Improper water harvesting measures, we have a lot of some area like Bihar, West Assam or Northeast region. These areas are flooded always uh, each year, but some area like Tamil Nadu, Punjab and uh, Haryana, they, they are suffering from water stress. So there is no proper water harvesting structure or water harvesting measures due to which uh, there is regional variation of the water. Advancement of soil cam in Haryana and Punjab, most of the farmers in Haryana and Punjab, they are transplanting paddy in the month of March, April, in which there will be there is no rain and they are entirely dependent on the irrigation water. So if they advance their soil cam, then the cost of the irrigation water can be saved. So these are the some measures due to which water efficiency of the India is low. Third is your land degradation problem. What is land degradation? Most of the swaths uh, of Punjab, Haryana, Bihar, you, uh, Western UP, they are suffering from soil salinity due to groundwater rise and impeded natural drainage in certain canal commands areas are well known. Since most of the canals in which water, uh, uh, excess water are uh, flooding, they are suffering from soil salinity, means pH of the soils just uh, increase the salinity or uh, salt concentration of the soil increasing due to which soils become un unfit for cultivation. Indiscriminate exploitation of the groundwater. Most of the areas of Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, they are overusing uh, groundwater due to which uh, this area has water level go beyond the expected level. Some area of Eastern UP, Bihar and Northeastern region are under, uh, they are not using water properly. Since they have sufficient water, but we are not using that water up to extent level, desired level. So some area uh, like Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, they are using uh, over, over irrigation. But some areas like Bihar and Northeast region of, uh, of the UP, uh, Bihar and Northeast region, they are under using the water. So over using and under using both are the dangerous for the uh, agriculture. If we are over using the uh, groundwater, what is the problem? Increased production cost. If we, mm, the water level go beyond the desired level, so what happens? Production cost for higher energy, higher pump, pump energy will increase as well as rice wheat cropping system will be under threat. Means the rice re requires regular water, regular flooding of the water. So that ecosystem got disturbed due to uh, deficiency of the water. Inefficient land use. There are so many projects of the government like construction of roads, railway, dams in highly productive area of the agriculture affect the productivity of the uh, or <coughs> availability of the food. Decline in factor productivity. What is factor productivity? Suppose we are using indiscriminate way in nitrogen, phosphorus and potash due to government subsidy. Government is pro providing a lot of subsidies in these fertilizers, only major nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potash. So farmers are using these fertilizers in a very heavy heavy dose so what happens due to heavy use of npk particular there will be deficiency of the other micronutrients so if new deficiency of other micronutrients say, happens in the field there will be poor response from the npk means whatever nitrogen phosphorus potassium you are applying in the field there will be very poor response due to the deficiency of these nutrients so these are terms are known as factor productivity so factor productivity are declining farmers are not giving importance to the micronutrients they are only giving importance to micronutrients like npk and most of the fields of uh, farmers are suffering from uh, declining factor productivity build up of the disease of pest over irrigation over irrigation indiscriminate fertilizer use faulty agricultural operation is all leads to the spread of many diseases pests, weeds which are the major challenges of the agriculture in adequate concentration of the environmental quality. A potential danger may be increased in the form of pollution of natural water bodies and underground aquifers due to nitrate, uh, nitrate leaching. We'll discuss it in the later in soils and uh, chapters. And phosphate causing imp uh, irreparable uh, harm to the natural ecosystem under high fertilizer use without uh, improving their use efficiency. Means we are using nitrogen and phosphorus in very indiscriminate uh, way. What happens is all nitrogen phosphorus, nitrogen leaches down, and in nitrate form they enter into the water bodies. Phosphate also enter into the water bodies. After entering water, they react with the uh, water and cause the water uh, quality very inferior, and that water become dangerous for consumption as well as for crops. 
so these are the major issues which are involved in the irrigated cropping system it should be managed now we will discuss important cropping system and their issues first is cropping system is rice wheat cropping system which are the major cropping system it covers up punjab haryana bihar west bengal and mp and now the heart of the rice wheat cropping system is about 10.5 million hectares of the area means major hectare, major areas covered under rice wheat cropping system what are the important issues you know rice is also nutrient consumptive crop wheat is also nutrient consumptive crops means there will there is no any nitrogen fixation or no any phosphate mobilization so both crops are nutrient consumptive so what is the main issues over mining of the nutrients from the soil rice is also mining the nutrients wheat is also mining the nutrients so that is the problem of over mining arises disturbs soil exists due to puddling the rice in rice each year we are knowing puddling puddling what in the first we flood the field and then start plowing with the tractor or some puddler so due to uh, regular puddling uh, soil aggregates got disturbs decreasing response to nutrients we have already discussed uh, that uh, due to overuse of nitrogen phosphorus and potash the micronutrient deficiency arises due to which their response uh, for from nitrogen phosphorus and potash decreases declining ground water table we have already discussed we have built up of the disease and pests since we are uh, using it, uh, indiscriminate use of an np nitrogen phosphorus and potash and excess irrigation which invites the various disease and pest build up of phalaris minus which is the very important weeds of the wheat and they are covering entire area of the wheat uh, growing regions low input use in the northwest plain northwest means uh, your punjab haryana we are applying high dose of nitrogen phosphorus and potash but not getting the optimum yield as compared uh, with respect to plant fertilizer so so fertilizer use efficiency got declining day by day low use of fertilizer fertilizer in eastern and central india in eastern or central india the area we are not using uh, adequate fertilizer as per recommendation so due to low use of fertilizer uh, optimum or uh, target yield could not achieved in eastern and central area india but in northwest area or punjab area we are using over nutrients means high dose of nutrients due to it nutrient use efficiency declining and we are not getting targeted yield as per applied fertilizers lack of appropriate varietal combination we are not uh, we have no any proper planning for varietal combination varietal combination means the variety which are suitable for the sandy soils of Punjab and Haryana we have to recommend that variety only in the sandy soils the uh, variety which can sustain the water logging like Bihar, Assam, in which are uh, always in flood, flooding condition, in that area, that variety should be recommended. But at national level, government has no any suitable plan to recommend the variety according to climate and rainfall patterns. Shortage of labor during optimum period of transplanting rice in Punjab. In Punjab, we are major area of the rice as cultivated under the uh, irrigated condition. But at the time of transplanting, there will always shortage of labor. So most of the farmer uh, labors from the Bihar, UP, they are migrated towards Punjab and doing this operation, which increases the cost of cultivations of the rice in Punjab area. Next cropping system is rice rice cropping system. This rice rice cropping system covers mainly coastal area and coastal area of the Odisha, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Kerala. It is spread over about uh, 6 million hectares. What are the major issues in the rice rice cropping system? First is deterioration of the soil physical conditions. So the rice is cultivated in the entire year. So two times rice is uh, cultivating. So what happens? Soil physical condition got deteriorated multiple times. We are doing puddling. So in puddling, deterioration of soil physical aggregates, you know, soil structure and soil texture. Soil texture is contribution of or proportionality proportion of sand, silt, and clay, but soil structure is the aggregate particles. Hence after physical disturbance that aggregate particles got broken and soil structure got deteriorated. Second is your micronutrient deficiency already discussed if you are cultivating rice there will always be application of nitrogen phosphorus potash and rice is a nutrient consumptive crop uh, uh, mining entire nutrients due to which uh, micronutrient deficiency arises in the rice field. Poor efficiency of the nitrogen use 
due to micronutrient deficiency, same problem, poor efficiency of the nitrogen use uh, rises. Imbalance used in the nit nutrients. We are using all the nutrients without soil test, pro without we are doing proper soil test. We are simply applying the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash due to this. There is the always imbalance of the nutrients. Some uh, extra nitrogen, extra potash got fixed in the soils and caused soil uh, disturbance in the soil particles. Non availability of the appropriate transplanter to mitigate labor shortage during critical periods of transplanting. In some areas of the Punjab or Haryana, in which there is acute shortage of labor, there is no any availability of the transplanter due to which there is a high cost of the labor to affect the CBA cost benefit ratio. Build up of obnoxious weed like echinocoa, echinocoa, cross-gilly, and non availability of the suitable crops like measures. In Kerala, rice is now replaced by plantation crop due to high profitability. Nowadays, rice is very cost intensive crop in which we have a lot of uh, labors, lot of nutrients, lot of irrigation is required due to which, or if we analyze the cost benefit ratio, the profitability of the rice is very low. That's why farmers are shifting towards the plantation of the new crops due to for their higher profitability. If we see in the Assam, there is low, low productivity under prevailing soil condition and climatic situation poor drainage and submerged area, low nutrient use and iron toxicity because in Assam area, most of the <coughs> rice bloom region are in flooded condition during the month of June to October. So in that area, if uh, there is stagnant water or water logging, iron toxicity is the main problem and uh, due to iron toxicity, most of the nutrients become unavailable and cause uh, nutrient deficiency. In some areas, paste and weeds are the major concern. So these are the issues of the rice rice cropping system. What is your rice 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 mustard cropping system? Important cropping system from food security and national economic point of view. In general, with a medium or short duration, high yielding variety, rice variety a successful mustard crop is possible. What happens? Rice is a short duration variety and high yielding. Transplanted in the month of June, July, and um, harvested in the month of November, uh, November, December, and after that. Mustard has been planted. So mustard is a very short duration crop and harvested up to March. And that after the harvesting of the mustard, we can grow other summer crops, which can be increase the uh, cropping intensity of the field. Fourth is your rice groundnut. Rice groundnut is basically actually groundnut is basically a kharif crop, but nowadays it is grown under the assured irrigation on well drained, low lying fertile lands after the harvest of preceding rice crop under the SEO irrigation in summer and rabi season. So basically it is a crepe crop, but nowadays it has a, it is cultivated in summer and rabi season also with double productivity. If we have assured irrigation facilities and we are cultivated in summer and rabi season, so due to suitable climate, we get double productivity as compared to summer season, sorry, kharif season. Main area of the rice non cropping system are Tamil Nadu, some selected districts like Periyar, Chengalpattu, Salam, Tanjavur, Kwamatur, Madurai, Airport, Tirusirapalli districts. Then some districts of Andhra Pradesh like Nellore, Chittur, Kurnool, Meha, Mahabubnagar, Anandpur, Varangal, Prakrasham. And some district of the Karnataka like Krishna, Katak, and Puri district of the Orissa, coastal district of the Konkan and Goa, Malathwa district of the and uh, Sakara region of the Maharashtra, Pune, Ahmadnagar district of the Maharashtra and Junagar district, district, Junaga district of the Gujarat. These areas uh, are adopted for rice groundnut cropping system. What is the major issue in this cropping system? Excess rainfall is during September, October creates water logging problems in the medium and low lying fertile rice fields. Non drainage of irrigation water in time through canals delays the land preparation and sowing of groundnut after rice during season because in these areas, irrigation is totally dependent on the canal system. So sometimes what happens? Uh, water is could not release on time whenever required uh, by the farmers. So this it uh, really, uh, results into the uh, decreasing yield of the ground. In rice also, sometimes there is dynamic problem and water logging has started due to which September October uh, water is still stagnant in the field and has, it creates uh, cause problem in the harvesting of the rice as well as planting of the uh, groundnut. So these are the problem in the rice groundnut uh, cropping system. Fifth, uh, fifth is your rice pulse cropping system. Rice pulse cropping system is a common uh, cropping system adopted in Chhattisgarh, Odisha, and parts of the Bihar. This, this uh, there are some issues involved in the rice uh, rice pulse cropping system, like factors limiting productivity of this cropping system. There are 
total three factors which are limiting the productivity of this uh, cropping system. First is your physical factor, input related factors and social factor. What are the physical factors? Physical factor involves drought, erratic distribution of rainfall, small area under SGO irrigation, high population of the resulting in the heavy nitrogen loss in red sandy soils, particularly in the wet area. Input related factors you to see delayed and prolonged uh, transplanting, low coverage out under high yielding varieties, little attention to timely weed control, inadequate supply of quality seed, little attention to disease and pest control. So these are the common factors which can be written in any uh, cropping system and it should be tabulated or always kept in the mind. Social factors involve low literacy because Bihar or Sand, uh, Chhattisgarh have uh, low literacy rate, no proper technical know-how. Large population, large proportion of marginal and tribal areas, tribal farmers, practice of animal grazing on agricultural land, low risk bearing capacity of the farmer because of lack of uh, proper insurance of the crops and uh, lack of suitable income to the farmers. So these are the social factors in the rice pulse cropping system. Fifth is your pearl millet wheat cropping system. Pearl millet wheat cropping system is mainly cultivated in the arid eco regions comprising of western plain of Kats, Kats, and part of Katiawar Peninsula having desert and saline soils and presently Gujarat, Rajasthan and Haryana. Yes, mainly permanent wheat cropping system adopted in the arid or semi-arid regions of Gujarat, Rajasthan and Haryana. Semi-arid ecoregion comprising of northwest plain of Haryana, western UP, Agra region and central highlands of the including Arauli, Banswara, Jaipur and Tong district of the Rajasthan with alluvium desired de derived soil and Gujarat plains and cut your plants of Gujarat state having medium and deep black soil. So mainly it is cultivated in arid soils, semi-arid uh, semi soils and some parts of the deep black soils. What are the problems in these areas? Over mining of the nutrients, both are the nutrient consumptive crop, permeate as well as wheat. Depletion and so if over mining, both crops are over mined, uh, consumptive nature, there will be the deep, uh, deep, uh, depleting of soil fertility. After displacement of soil fertility, there will be imbalancing in the fertilizer use. So imbalance in fertilizer use. So if you imbalance the fertilizer, what happens? They are decreasing response to the nutrients. Means if micronutrient deficiency arises, there will be poor response from the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium and major nutrients. Lowering groundwater table, we already this area received very low rainfall, and uh, most of the uh, water available in the soil are consumed by the permeate and wheat. So our ground uh, groundwater table they uh, start uh, lowering. Build of disease and pest and weeds. These are the common pro problems of the permeate per and weed cropping system. Sixth is your permeate mustard uh, cropping system. These are cultivated mainly in the northwest, west, and central part of the India. In several parts of Haryana, Rajasthan, UP, and Madhya Pradesh, where monocropping of permeate and mustard was most common. Means both uh, mustard as well as Permeate both are cultivated as monocrop. Increase in irrigation, irrigation facility has made it possible to grow these crops in secret. Nowadays, government is uh, providing some subsidy for irrigation. So, by irrigation facility, it can be cultivated in the uh, permeate and mustard. Both can be cultivated as a monocrop. But what are the major issues in permeate mustard ecosystem? Delayed sowing of the mustard after harvest of the permeate because permeate are mainly harvested in the month of October or November. So mustard sowing has been delayed. Permanent is an exhaustive cereal crop and it depletes soil of essential nutrients. So you know, permanent and wheat both are the essential uh, exhaustive cereal crops. So it will uh, mine the nutrients from the soils, which depletes the soil nutrients for the next crop. Non-application of the sulfur in this area by farmer most of the because sulfur, you know, sulfur uh, is very essential nutrient for, for the mustard or any wild seed crops. The, most of the wild seed uh, crops are sensitive to sulfur deficiency and most of the farmers in this area are not, not applying the sulfur due to which mustard productivity is uh, decreasing. Short, shortage of farmers made by the farmers in this area. Farmland and mustard as uh, uh, requires uh, essential farm machinery for cultivation as well as for harvesting. But farmers of this area are very poor and uh, not have adequate farm machinery. Build up of disease. Uh, DJ by continuous cultivation of permeate and mustard. Both permeate and mustard, if we grow uh, continuously, so what happens? Some of the uh, DJ are transferred from permeate to mustard and from mustard to permeate. So, DJ cycle is continuing due to which uh, some uh, DJ become uh, particular to prone, uh, prone to these areas. 
seventh year maize wheat maize hip are the major growing area and principal crop maize is the mainly kharif crops in the north, northern hill of the country but in plains of the north northern state like up rajasthan madhya pradesh and bihar also sizable acreage under maize cultivation is nowadays growing poor maize wheat yield has been reported from andhra pradesh assam gujarat madhya pradesh maharashtra rajasthan tripura eastern up and tamil nadu there are number of reasons for poor yield in the maize what are the major issues involved in the maize wheat cropping system these are the sowing times means the sowing time differ in different regions and due to delayed sowing time the yield reduction reported poor plant population uh, since maize plant has been uh, maize is the heavy seed so it requires higher seed rate and high yielding variety is very costly due to which farmers is not applying proper uh, or adequate seed in the field due to which plant population reduces and yield ultimately reduces poor weed management since due to wide spacing row to row and plant to plant distance is wide so in the initial condition they uh, up to two, uh, one or two months there will be few weed competition means competition between wheat and maize plants due to which whatever nutrients we are applying whatever resources we are applying that are consumed by the wheat and due to poor weed management practices yield of the maize is reducing poor use of organic and inorganic fertilizers since maize requires both organic as well as inorganic fertilizers but nowadays farmers only concentrate are only concerned mainly concentrating on the inor and this inorganic fertilizer due to which yield is going to reduce due to a deficiency of the some micronutrients large area under enfed mulch since maize is the water responsive crop and uh, even delayed in one or two irrigation it uh, results in a drastic reduction in the yield so most of the area are only rain fed due to which yield reduction is reported uncertainty of rain when fall wider spacing in the hilly area lead to soil erosion wider spacing we are following so if we cultivate the maize in the hilly area what happens the problem of soil erosion or water erosion soil erosion reported multiple nutrient deficiency due to mining of the nutrients is maize is also nutrient exhaustive crop and wheat is also nutrient exhaustive crop so what if you applying uh, cultivating both crops simultaneously continuous mining of the nutrients rises and results into the nutrient deficiency so these are the major issues of the maize wheat cropping system eighth is your sorghum wheat cropping system sorghum wheat uh, cropping this is just a minor cropping system followed in the eastern part of rajasthan western and central part of mp western maratwada and vidarbha region of the maharashtra southern gujarat and north parts of the karnataka and telangana sorghum faces wide fluctuation due to some problems wheat is okay wheat uh, requires irrigation and some fertilizer wheat we are cultivating if uh, irrigation facility is uh, available but is sorghum some problem as the three problems what stiga disease stiga is a parasitic wheat which affect the yield of the sorghum the next year stop should put and should fly these are the major insect of the sorghum which suck the entire fruits fruit juice in, in, during uh, after flowering condition these are the major uh, insects next is a fluctuating mar market price of the sorghum is not uh, stagnant that's why farmer afraid from cultivating sorghum and uh, they always in the risk of the price loss our sorghum is important source of food uh, fodder for the cattle however some areas of some farmers which are uh, Uh, rearing cattle they are they are a main source of the food is only sorghum so they are cultivating this sorghum and following sorghum wheat uh, cropping system sugar and sugar cane wheat cropping system about 3.4 million hectare in northern india like up punjab haryana and bihar which account for 68% of the total area under sugar cane means only up punjab haryana and bihar contributes about 70% of the total sugar cane productions sugar cane right on wheat is the most important crop sequence Right, no, right. Meaning what? After harvesting of the sugar cane, if we allow that uh, part of the sugar cane in the field without uh, removing from, from the field, then it will give rise to further uh, next uh, sugar cane. So this process is called uh, ripening. This the system is also getting more potent in Jorhat, Belgaum district of Karnataka. The other sequence where the system covers the suitable area under sugar cane are uh, Haryana, Punjab, MP, Rajasthan province in sugar cane wheat system are. So mainly these are cultivated in the Haryana, Punjab, MP, Rajasthan, and nowadays it has been cultivated in the some Belgaum district of Karnataka as well as Kolhapur district of Maharashtra, some Assam and Ahmednagar. So what are the major issues involving this sugar sugar cane wheat planting system? Date planting of the sugar cane. 
as well as it generally farmers are following late planting which results uh, results into the low uh, the reduction in the yield imbalance and inadequate use of nutrients most of the farmers are not applying nutrients as per soil test well what happens there is the, the, there will be the imbalance in the nutrients this majority of the farmers supplying only nitrogen sugarcane and the use of phosphorus and potassium is limited emerging nutrient deficiency of the phosphorus potassium and sulfur and micronutrients are limiting system productivity directly and through interaction with other nutrient so soil what is the solution nutrients should be applied after proper soil test value and there should be proper combination of phosphorus potassium and sulfur as per requirement poor nitrogen use efficiency since we are uh, applying only nitrogen and due to unavailability of the micronutrients nitrogen use efficiency declining lower, lower productivity of rice due to poor starting of winter harvested sugarcane in north india if we allow rice crop there will be reduction in yield building of time came up uh, particularly custom and cypress rotten and sugarcane they are the worst uh, noxious weed of the sugarcane which uh, ready we are reducing the yield of the sugarcane crop apart from this stubble of the sugarcane pose delays problem for succeeding crops and need to manage properly when we allow rice crop next year if we are cultivating wheat it creates problem in the delays apart from this there are some diseases like red rot caused by the scolito titanium falcatum uh, root borer root borer these are the some insect and diseases which affect the sugarcane yield next is your cotton heat cropping system what are the cotton with these are widely grown in the yellow bean soil of north india like punjab and rajasthan western up and black cotton soils of the central india like andhra pradesh tamil nadu and karnataka with the availability of the short duration variety of cotton cotton wheat cropping system has become dominant in the north india so what are the major issues in cotton wheat cropping system main issues are delayed planting of succeeding wheat after harvest of the cotton after harvest of the cotton generally cotton are harvesting in the month of november december so wheat uh, planting or wheat uh, sowing become delayed the stubble of cotton create same like uh, sugarcane the stubble of cotton create from stillage operation and poor tilth of the for wheat susceptibility for high yield variety of cotton to ball on white fly are consequently high cost of their control since for uh, ball on white fly are the major pest of the cotton and it requires a lot of pesticides as well as insecticide to control them so which increase the cost of cultivation of the sugarcane poor nitrogen use efficiency in the cotton result in the low productivity of the system generally nitrogen use is efficiency reduction is the major problem in our entire cropping system we can write it in all cropping system because most of the farmers in the india are cultivating uh, applying only nitrogen without proper soil test value and which uh, results in the uh, micronutrient deficiency and micronutrient deficiency increases the uh, decreases the nit nitrogen use efficiency appropriate technology for inter intercropping in widely spread uh, cotton in the to be developed next is your soybean wheat cropping system soybean wheat cropping system has emerged as an important cropping system only after 1918 means cultivation of soy soybean as started only after 1950 with the introduction of soybean as a kharif crop growing area of the country particularly under irrigated ecosystem so what are the major issues involved in the soybean wheat cropping system are recent introduction since uh, just 20 or 30 years has been uh, you know, past after the introduction of soybean limited genetic diversity then then genetic diversity is very limited we have no very big diversity so that we can uh, grow new variety or we can do experiment for the introduction of our hybridization with a new variety short growing period available in the indian latitudes because soybean is a requires uh, have more growing period but in near latitude it have has only short growing periods hindered agronomy availability of input at farm levels there will no suitable suitable agronomy or availability of the inputs at the farm level level in indian condition rain fed nature of crop and water scarcity at critical stage of the plant growth since most of the soybean crops are only grown in rain fed area so there is always water scarcity at the critical stage of the plant growth what is critical stage critical stage is the stage of the plant which the at which proper fertilizer proper irrigation should be applied otherwise yield will be reduced insect pest and disease resistance uh, quality improvement problems inadequate mechanization and partial reduction of the technology by the farmers in most of the farmers are have not uh, adequate technology due to which their uh, yield is uh, going to reduce lagging based cropping system 
What are the legume based cropping systems? The popular cropping system are pigeon pea wheat in the Madhya Pradesh and groundnut wheat in the Gujarat and Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh and groundnut sorghum in Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. So mainly in legume based cropping system are mainly depend upon the pigeon pea or groundnut. Pigeon pea is uh, grown with the wheat in the MP and uh, pigeon groundnut uh, with the wheat in the Gujarat, Maharashtra and MP and groundnut with the sorghum in the Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. So, what are the major issues in the legume based cropping system are no technological breakthrough has been achieved so far as respect to the yield barriers, particularly the legumes. Means we have hit, uh, there are so many potential we have to be exploited in the yield barrier of the uh, legumes. Susceptibility as opposed to the aberrant weather like uh, frost, dust, cold, heavy rainfall condition, especially waterlogging and first swells, making them highly unstable in performance. Sometimes frost happens, sometimes water logging happens, sometimes uh, heavy cold happens. So, crop, legumes crop are very susceptible to the aberrant weather. They not tolerate these aberrant weather. So, these are the major challenges for the crop uh, legumes growing uh, farmers. High susceptibility to disease and pest since uh, they are very aberrant to the weather. So, they are highly susceptible to disease and pest also. So, a lot of disease like down mildew, poultry mildews. Uh, Beetles, these are the major insect and pests uh, which attack the legumes. Low harvest index, we know har what is har water harvest index. Uh, it is the ratio of economic uh, biological economic weight by har uh, biological weight. Means what is the ratio? Uh, suppose we are cultivating pigeon pea, so we get only five tons of the uh, pigeon pea seed and five hundred tons of the their uh, leaf and other uh, stem, which are useless. Flower drops are the major problem in the all legumes crop like pigeon pea and ground where a lot of flowers are uh, blowing in the field it so that higher will be obtained but after one or two months all flowers got dropped drop down due to some uh, hormonal deficiency. Nutrient needs of the uh, nutrient needs of the system have to be worked out after considering nitrogen fixation capacity of the leg uh, legumes which indeterminate high growth habit and very poor response to the fertilizer and watering the most of the grains of the legume uh, crops. So what happens, uh, legumes crop are very poor response to the fertilizers as well as water. So uh, yield could not be reduced. So these are the major challenges or issues involved in the legume based cropping system. I will talk about horticultural crops. The horticulture crop about cover about 9% of the total area and contributing under uh, contributing about 24% of the 24.5% of the gross agriculture output of the country. Means they cover only 9% of the total area, but contribute 24.5% of the gross agriculture output of the country. However, the productivity of fruit and vegetables grown in India is as low as compared to developed countries. There are so many factors which re uh, results into the decreasing yield of the horticulture crops. So first we talk about vegetables, entire horticulture vegetables, entire country has been divided into six vegetable growing zones, these are temperate zone, northwestern subtropical zone, northeastern subtropical zone, central tropical zone, southern tropical zone, coastal humid tropical zone. First we discuss about temperate, temperate zone means zones which are which having low temperature or low latitude. It involves uh, Jammu Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Upper, Upper Uttaranchal, and Punjab, Darjeeling Hill area of West Bengal, Nilgiri Hills area of Tamil Nadu, and Nathan Sikkim. These are the temperate areas. If we talk about northwestern subtropical zone, it involves Haryana, parts of Punjab, UP, and Madhya Pradesh and Bihar. Northeastern subtropical zone involves most part of the Bihar, northwest part of the West Bengal, Meghalaya, Assam, and Nagaland. Central tropical zone involves Gujarat, MP, Maharashtra, Western, West Bengal. Tripura, Manipur and part of the Mizoram. Southern tropical zone involves Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Coastal humid tropical zone involves Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal and Odisha. So these are the six vegetable growing zones in the India. Now we will discuss what are the major issues or constraints involved in the vegetable production. First is your lack of planning in the production. We have not adequate plan or layout plan before planting of any vegetable crops. Now I will tell you said because most of the vegetables are the cross pollinated variety. So each year we have we need new seeds and in Indian condition there is no uh, availability of the new improved seed, uh, seed varieties due to which farmers are facing problems uh, in vegetable production. High cost of basic production elements since the entire cultivation involves heavy uh, 
here we use a flavor like um, a spray of the pesticide, a spray of the herbicides, and vegetables are the fresh crop, so it requires always application of the pesticides, herbicides, as well as weedicides. So it involves high cost, high uh, cost of cultivation, inadequate plant protection measures, and non available recession varieties. And most of the vegetable crops are susceptible to the disease and pest. So there is no any ability of the resistant variety which can sustain or which can tolerate the uh, disease and pests, pests. Weak marketing facilities, most of the farmers are suffering from uh, market, uh, faulty marketing facilities. When they have gut of production or heavy production, most of the vegetable products got uh, deteriorated or actually destroyed due to poor price. Transport, uh, transportation limit, farmers have no any refrigerated vehicles or poor uh, proper transportation facilities so that it can transport the material or transport their uh, raw uh, this uh, vegetable products from their field to the markets this is also one of the major concern, uh, constraints in the vegetable production post harvest losses most of the around 25 to 40 percent of the losses arises only after the harvest of the vegetable crops due to proper harvesting method uh, due to improper harvesting method improper transportation method and improper Marketing facilities. Abiotic stress also is a common problem in the vegetable production, like a deficiency of the particular nutrient, deficiency of the uh, excess of the nutrient, mineral toxicity. These are the ma major constraints of the vegetable production. So, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment in the box below. If you want any new video related to agriculture, UPSC, IFSC, or state PSC service uh, exam, and let me know in the comment box given below it is my personal guarantee that video will be uploaded within 24 hour, uh, hours thank you for watching the video have a nice day